hello everyone welcome to my channel if this is your first time on my channel you are definitely welcome my name is Jemima I'm a wife to a handsome epic man a mom to a beautiful princess and I live in Houston Texas so on this channel I am sharing my experience as an international student how I came to the US I was 18 years old I came to the US in 2015 when I was 18 years old as an inter as an undergrad international student and on this channel I will be sharing with you guys my entire experience how i started as an international student and how i got to where i'm at today anyways so in today's video i will be sharing with you how much i made as an international student and how much i spent as an international student and i'll be splitting this video into two different parts so this first part is just the beginning yes of um when i started as an international student the other part will be how much i made and uh, how I started paying my tuition as well. So this entire journey that I will be sharing with you guys would involve being vulnerable. I And I don't mind being vulnerable. I don't mind sharing my hardest of hardest experience. I would not trade my experience for anything. I am not ashamed of my experience. And the thing is, the main purpose of me doing this video is to help people because um, there are so many things I wish I knew before coming here. And there are just so many things that I would want to help people. I would like to share with people. And then don't, like I said, this is actually my experience, okay? So it's different for everybody, but in one way or the other, you would learn something. So yeah, so I just hope this video is helpful to you in any way. So let's jump right into this video. So like as I mentioned, this is gonna involve a lot of vulnerability in this channel and this is the first vulnerable thing I will be sharing with you guys and there will be more in-depth thing that will come in the future. So yes, I came, to, when I was coming to the US, like I had mentioned, I was 18 years old and that was in 2015. So in the US here, um, international students, undergrad international students under the age of 21 cannot, are supposed to live on campus. I mean, it's not like you can't live off campus. I only spent two months on campus anyways. And I will make a video sharing that, how I moved off campus but yes so you are supposed to live on campus as an international student i only came here with 200 dollars because first of all um, my family didn't have money then i mean they didn't have that money to give me and that money was gifted to me by my older brother's boss at work um that was his gift for me to you know come to school kind of thing so he gave my brother the money to give it to me so yes i came with that as my pocket money but the good thing is i was living on campus so I didn't have much, I didn't have any bills. The only thing I needed to get were like my toiletries and little snacks and here and there. So I was mainly eating on campus. I actually didn't have a job. I spent the entire quarter looking for work and I didn't get anyways out like I had already made a video talking to you guys how I got my job and things you should do yeah so then I was looking for my I was looking for a job I didn't get a job but yeah I didn't have much expenses but I needed to move off campus so this is when my expenses started this is when my money started I started earning some money and whatever so the next quarter I moved off campus and like I had mentioned if you guys want to know the whole process of how I moved off campus as an international student undergrad under the age of 21 I would also make that video so I moved off campus and I actually found a job on campus so I got a job at the computer lab and then they only needed someone that because they had 10 more hours um, available and they didn't have any other employee or student worker to take those hours so I was given that job but the only hours they had available were 10 hours so if you guys don't know international student can only work off on campus my bad not off you can only work on campus with a maximum of 20 hours a week so if you're working 20 hours a week you roughly make about 500 dollars at least as of then in my school um it's 500 dollars ab about you make so working 10 hours a week i i used to make like 200 dollars a month and my rent was 293 dollars and now i know you're wondering how did you survive how <laughs> this is where i will share with you the extra things i did to make money to feed myself <laughs> Okay, so I used to make two hundred, about two hundred dollars a month then, 
and my rent was $293 for the specific apartment that I was living at. It was called Staples Glen. I don't know how much it is now. Actually, I think I moved out when they added $50 to the rent then. Anyways, I moved out then. But as of then, it was $293 for the room. It was a four-bedroom townhouse, but each room you paid $293. So it was like a thousand something for the entire apartment. But each room, because we split it, it would pay $293. So anyways, so... The job I had that was making $200, you know, it was $7.25 for per hour. So if you calculate it, like I said, it's going to be $200 per hour. And I didn't have money for groceries. I didn't have money for the bills because it was rent alone was $293. And then we had electricity bill. We had internet bill. No, no, that apartment came with internet actually. But we still had to no we didn't get our own yeah we didn't get our own so we had electricity bill we had gas bill so those were the major bills we had so how i saw how was i able to survive i know you're wondering so one thing i started doing was you know how people are moving like let's say someone is moving an apartment or moving from this place to another something shy, i used to ask them like do you want me to help you move so you can give me something so there was this lady she was so nice she was her parent bought her a house i know her parent bought her a house and she was moving from her apartment to the house so it was a lot anyway she didn't want to pay movers because it's going to be expensive so i asked her if i can help her move and then she pays me now if you know me if you know me i don't know how to lift heavy things day to day I'm not good at lifting heavy things. It's just very hard for me, but I still do it anyway, but it's not something I know I'm, I can be proud of saying I can. And I don't have a high tolerance for pain too. So lifting heavy stuff, being in pain, all those stuff is not for me, but I had to do it. I did it. I lifted heavy furniture, so I climbed stairs, I did everything and she paid me $200. So that month I was able to make my $200 credit plus my $200 from campus, I had $400. And of, of course, I don't get that. I don't get to have that every month. It was just something that would come like maybe once in a blue moon, honestly. So how was I able to survive again in those periods? It was amazing people that were in my life. So I had an amazing, I have, I had amazing roommates. Um, they were from Sri Lanka, Dinesha, Ishani. I know they are not seeing this video. They are not going to see this video, but if they do, I am so grateful for them. So they used to cook. They cook like um, their Sri Lankan food, all this rice and some sauce and stuff. They used to feed me. So that was how I used to eat. And then there's like free food on campus from like um, all this um, Christian organization, Wesley Foundation, B BCM. They had different Christian organizations. You would always find me when they have free foods. I know Wesley's was on Wednesday. So Wednesday afternoon, I'm there eating my lunch. It's usually like $1 too though, but you can do IOU for one dollar then you can pay later and stuff like that so i used to do that a lot <laughs> you find in fact even in the islamic <laughs> in the islamic um community too they are on campus thing i used to go there for the free food so yeah i mean i'm not ashamed of it honestly i just needed to survive then i remember when before i got used to the sri lankan food um it, everything looked weird to me like i said you know i was coming from nigeria i wasn't so open to other things yet so the, my roommates would um boil you know always pour rice in the rice cooker and i used to fetch their rice and pour ketchup on it or barbecue sauce i don't even used to know whoever had it in the fridge but i used to use it or i melt cheese on it and eat i used to eat rubbish all i just needed to do was to survive so there was a time that i had posted on snapchat um i was like i'm hungry and there's this girl um may she may her so rest in peace um Ngozi, she passed away her and her roommate her roommate is alive i mean very alive gloria um the gloria saw it on snapchat so i i think Ngozi was not on snapchat but gloria saw it and was like look jemima posted this she said she's hungry and before i knew it Ngozi called me it was raining Ngozi and Gloria, they went to the store to buy groceries. I will never in my life, I will never forget that. I will never forget that. They bought me groceries like bags, big bags of groceries. And that was how I was able to have food for the month. 
good. So as for the bill part, because my rent was like $293 and let's say electricity splitted, everybody paid like $50 and gas maybe $10. Um, so let's say everything $60 for my bills. My roommate Dinesha, she always used to help me out with that. So that was how I was able to survive. Honestly, I wouldn't have been able to survive without their help that's why knowing people and you know meeting people is really important when you come here and also for feeding i didn't mention my because my brother was also on campus where he was living in the campus apartment so he still had like those benefits where you can still eat on campus so i used to go use his card sometimes to eat whenever maybe he would just keep a meal for me to go eat and stuff like that so i survived that way as well and if they cook something him and um, agnes if they make something I, I get to eat sometimes, um, I, I will go to his place and they will have something and I will eat. So that was how I was able to survive that time. And then Ungozi, late Ungozi, may her so rest in peace. Um, she was the one that told me about, um, I don't know, I'm getting a little emotional. She was the one that told me about um, Aramak job. So when I, she was the one that told me about Aramak. She told me how to apply. She referred me there. Like I had made a video like couple, like a month ago, talking about how to work over 20 hours a week. Yes, that was Aramak. So I finally got the Aramak job, and then I started making. I used to work like between 25 to 30 hours a week. Some weeks is less though. So, but roughly then in the month, I made like. $1,200 and it was all legally legally on campus so that helped the thing is the, the the crazy situation here is international students you can only stay on campus okay if you're under 18 years old I mean that's the rule but during the holidays you're expected to leave the campus so imagine like if you if you don't have anybody here where are you going to go, gonna go to it doesn't make sense to me so I just recommend you move off campus because to me it was even more if um, I saved more money and all this while I actually didn't have my own phone so I had a phone that someone lent it to me Joseph he, it was a phone he came from Nigeria with so it was Infinix phone or something like that I actually didn't have a phone of my no it was not Infinix phone it was the same techno it was techno it was techno phone he had brought from Nigeria but he wasn't using it. I think he had gotten like an iPhone or something like that here. So he gave that to me. So I didn't have minutes in my phone. So I didn't even have a SIM card. I just used to use um, this app, Text Me, Text Now, the ones that you you use when there's Wi-Fi. So yep, I didn't pay phone bills. I, I didn't. I didn't mention that. So that wasn't part of the bills I was paying as well. So my bills weren't much. And all, all also like part of the one thousand two hundred I was making, I had to put some money towards tuition as well so um and as as well the 293 i was paying for rent after a couple months i was able to find someone one amazing woman carissa she was such a god-fearing woman um she, we started splitting my room together so the 293 was now splitted in half she was also splitting the bills with us so you know i got to save more money um and i was able to put more towards my tuition but i mean that was that's this is basically the first phase okay i would make a, an entire video talking about how i was able to pay my tuition completely myself okay by myself completely but not this video and i was able to make my money myself to pay my tuition as well but it's not this video anyway so after doing that yes my financial situation got a lot better but i that was when you know 2015 was when this whole nigerian recession thing happened and um so i'm just just saying you guys <laughs> i'm not even following like any this thing per se in, um points per se but yeah th that was when the whole nigerian recession thing happened and it was so hard for them to even send money here like it was so hard the exchange rate became so bad even though now it's even worse but then you know of course it was really bad for us then too now i wish it would even go back to the amount but anyways things were so it was so hard and tuition and and the family i, I come from like we weren't able to afford that you know so things got really hard but thank god i was able to sail through the money i was making was helping my family with tuition so they were only able to 
they will be able to pay half of it and I paid half of it but yeah that was how I was able to make my money on campus that was how much I was making and that was how much I was spending it wasn't a lot of money I was spending to be honest um, it was more of me making money and putting it towards my tuition and textbooks and you know it's so crazy you pay a lot of a lot for tuition but then you still have to pay like sometimes in the in the quarter it's like six hundred dollars goes towards t a textbooks and it's so annoying that the textbooks are just for homework and anyway so yes that's how much i was able to make now what i'll end this video telling you is if you happen to come to the u.s with a lot of money don't splurge it um make sure you have that balance first okay have that balance a little bit balanced first before you start spending your money because some people it's, it's just it's just painful to think about to think about throwback money okay you have to be wise with how you spend your money here and if you think that you don't have the money and um i don't want to i don't want to be the one to i don't know i don't know how to put this i know it to sound so easy if i say it this way but if you really want to come abroad, if you really, really want to come to the U.S. or any other country and the, the money aspect, financial aspect is like the thing that, you, of course, you feel like there's no way for you, just try. Just at least go and come. It's, it's going to work out. <laughs> it's definitely going to work out because I will share everything. Like I said, this is the beginning of me being vulnerable. I've not even sh I didn't even share anything with you guys here at all i will share my entire in fact even my life back in nigeria don't worry you will get to know everything so the fact that i am here in this position you can too okay like i said i i don't think i said it but the the situation i was in i never even thought i'll be i'll have the opportunity to actually get into a plane even my brother when my brother was able to come here i just thought it was only gonna be him like he's a breakthrough for the family and so yeah i don't let the money aspects um discourage you honestly because it's gonna work out it just needs hard work you know <laughs> so yeah anyways thank you guys for watching this video i know i'm back i'm back i'm back on youtube again okay i keep doing back and off off and off i'm back here okay <laughs> so i hope you enjoyed the gist and i hope you'll be subscribed okay and i would love to have it here i would love to come back here and i really appreciate those um subscribing i really appreciate the amazing comments i keep getting and thank you so much i really appreciate everything um those people that shared my video i see you <laughs> i didn't even know youtube actually not sends the notification when someone shares a video but i got the notification thank you rookie dean <laughs> thank you very much i really appreciate it and yes i will see you guys in the next video and let me know what videos you want to see from me and i definitely will deliver okay bye, -bye.